What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Oakland A's franchise on MLB The Show 23. We've got the All-Star break along with the MLB draft in today's episode. Now, at the very end of the last video, I had triggered the draft and had to record it there and then. So I'm going to put that part of the video in now. We're getting into the 2027 Major League Draft. And I think that although we pick at number 10, we still have a very good chance of coming away with some really solid players this year. I do my best to give us plenty of options for our first few picks. If we end up with, you know, more players we like down the board, then that's just a bonus. But you really can't count on nailing every pick. It's, it's difficult to do that. You kind of have to pick and choose where you want to have a lot of options. And given the state of our roster, I choose to scout more of the high-rated prospects. Perhaps as we continue on, I'll be looking to strengthen the middle. But once you start picking like 20th, in a lot of cases, it's difficult to know who's even going to be available when it's your turn. So it's almost easier to target mid-round options, because then you give yourself way more choices. Now, I accidentally triggered the draft upon finishing up the final game of last episode. So I have not read any feedback on the draft, and I'm recording this just a minute after doing the last video. All right, we pick at 10 this year, no longer in the top three. The Rockies won the lottery, and they picked number one. So the top of our board features Jesus Medrano, starting pitcher from the Dominican Republic with 79 to 94 potential. Then you go Robin Worley, the center fielder who can play some defense, has some power, 78 to 93 potential. Bobby Turner, another good starting pitcher option. You got Daryl Enriquez, a contact first outfielder who is a left-handed hitter doesn't have the best fielding he's a good prospect but maybe not the best prospect for us just because we have a lot of contact first guys that don't play great defense Darren Delahanty contact first infielder who might have some defensive upside and maybe first base would be better for him or second George Rivera a starting pitcher Although, uh, nothing really standing out. He's just 20th on the board and could have good potential. Manny Reyes, a player that I'm really intrigued with as far as uh, hitting prospects goes, that's for sure. We'll see who ends up being available once we're on the clock. The Rockies get us underway. And they start the draft with the selection of Bobby Turner. Wow, he goes number one when he was seventh on our board. So already, one option no longer available. Next up at number two, Garth Bennett, a player who was not on our radar. And the Tigers at number three go with Ricky Lynn, the catcher. Again, we didn't scout him. And now we wait to see who else goes. No, that was my guy that I wanted. Jesus Madrano goes to the Pittsburgh Pirates. He wasn't going to be a flashy high strikeout pitcher, but there was a lot to like as far as just the future upside, limiting walks, limiting home runs. That one hurts. Enriquez and Delahanty are the next to go. They're drafting off my board here. This is ridiculous. There's Robin Worley going, and we're on the clock with four minutes to make a decision. George Rivera, I just wasn't as convinced because nothing projects to be even above average. Manny Reyes is a good hitter. Doesn't play uh, great defense. So I want to move Reyes into the top spot on the queue. If time runs out on me here. Cecil Tackett, starting pitcher. So a lot of his skill is weighed by that uh, stamina being really good. And then limiting home runs is important. But 
I'm really worried about developing pitchers with this series of walk issues. Like 15 to 27, that's going to be a weakness that carries with him throughout his career. Kenny Sparbori. We got an outfielder who can play a little defense. Although, it, it's really more so he can throw okay. His defense, the fielding itself isn't great. Probably won't be great. So clearly we're not dealing with the same caliber of prospects that we were at the start of these other drafts that we've done. Time is running out, and I still don't know if I like anybody more than Reyes. Because at least he's got a great set of strengths. And he could be a very complete offensive player. He's 22nd on our board, so it's a reach by our standards. It would be a reach by Major League standards. But I just feel better about his skill set. It's unfortunate that so many targets already went. Madrano was my number one. As far as our board and the guys we've actually scouted, George Rivera is number one. But there's just not enough developed to his game right now. I feel best taking Manny Reyes. So if he ends up being someone who's a bit positionless, doesn't really fit in, you know, maybe he ends up being someone that's traded. But he's only 18 years old. You can be patient with him. And that's a decision you can make in a few years' time. But we do add a really good hitting prospect and a more, a more complete prospect in that regard than many of the others. Like, he's obviously not a good defender, but he's one of the best pure hitters, I think, in this class. This is kind of a surprise, but Manny Reyes is actually the very first first baseman that I have selected in this entire series. He's the only one. Basil Williams just got drafted. I almost scouted him, but I wouldn't have had enough time to finish it. But there was a lot to be intrigued with here. I want to say his profile has somewhat changed since the last time I saw it. But uh, I'll be very interested in how he turns out. Just the ranges at 65 to 99 even for present. That could have been a huge miss if I didn't scout him. We move ahead to our next draft pick. Looks like a couple more of our options are off the board. Kenny Sparbori goes to the Mariners. And we are on the clock. And we have George Rivera here on the board. So he ranks well for us. And the potential could be good. It's just you don't know what his strengths are really going to be. Where is he going to get better? He might just be, you know, low everything. And you never know where the ratings are going to go. But if he's got high potential, he's got a chance. I think here we're just going to go with the board. He was our 20th ranked player. And he should, you know, in theory have good potential. And we can work out the rest later. Now, if he's the 20th best player on our board and he turns out to be... Well, I guess you can get unlucky. But maybe our board just wasn't that strong and being 20th on a bad board didn't mean much. You know, that's possible. On the clock, and it seems like our targets aren't going as often. So now we've got Samuel Guevara, 50 seconds on the board. A lefty in the outfield with contact skill. I just feel like if he's 52nd, and I'm not even that impressed looking at the numbers, I don't know if it was a down year or if I just didn't scout that well this season. So I think we're going to go away from the board here. And I'm actually going to go a lot further down our team board. And I want to select Christopher Byers. He's 22 years old. Should be a high C, low B potential starting pitcher. The strikeout stuff is going to be, you know, not great right away, but 59 to 64 is a lot better than most, and that projects to be pretty good for him. Walks could be a bit of an issue, but he does have good velocity. Throws a high 90s fastball. He did opt out of the doctor exam, but I'm going to select him here in round two. Now suddenly, there's only three players on our board. Trey Robeson, I thought would be fun to add at some point. His potential looked good. 
But now we've only got three players. Oh, no, we have more on the board. I was just at the very bottom. That's my bad. So now do we want to take our number 52 player and Sammy Guevara? I think now at 85 overall, I'm cool with that. Now, we did not finish the scouting on him, so who knows where this one's going to end up. We move ahead to 115 overall. I still got Mariano Lopez available, but his potential range is only 69 to 79. Gustavo Gonzalez is 72 to 82. But I kind of want to go with Tommy Mantle here because we know that he's a more powerful hitter than a lot that we tend to see. And he's in the outfield. So I'm more intrigued here with Tommy Mantle. The board is empty now, and we've got to go make two more selections. So who knows if these end up being hits in any way. Well, we got a player who wasn't in our top 100 here, but we did scout him. He's 143, and the potential range is off the charts. There's no reason to not take Lawrence Emasa here in the fifth. And now at 175, we'll wrap this up. And we're going to try taking a reliever with our last pick. It's going to be Akio Suzuki. And that will end it here in the year five draft. I'm jumping in here after getting into editing. And unfortunately for the rest of the video, I won't have any gameplay audio. I accidentally had that muted for this recording. So I don't have any gameplay sounds for this episode. Hopefully we came away with some decent players in this class. I'm not as confident as in any of the prior classes, but I do feel like Manny Reyes can at least be a, a really solid hitter for us, and hopefully that potential just comes in at a pretty good spot. But we'll find out those ratings all in due time. Next up, we have the All-Star Game and the Home Run Derby. And it does not appear that we're going to have a lot of A's action here. We don't have any starting pitchers in the All-Star game. And it looks like we don't have a single pitcher, period. We have Tyler Soderstrom, the top vote getter at catcher across all of baseball. And then we have Luis Arise, who was second overall in second base voting number one in the American League. That means Vladimir Guerrero does not make it. He also did not make it to the home run derby. I didn't realize just how many players had more homers than him at this stage of the year. You had to get 20 in order to make it this year and Vladdy came up a little bit short. Maybe one day we'll get to play in a derby, but not today. We won't spend too much time here in the all-star game. But we can celebrate two of our best players that have put us into a pretty good spot going into the deadline or the break to begin with. Luis Arise is hitting 309 on the year and he's been an outstanding addition in this series. And he sends this into center field on a line for the out. We jump ahead into the second inning and Tyler Soderstrom's at the plate with his 300 average 15 home runs and 58 RBIs could see some pretty cool milestones this year for Tyler if the second half can maintain could 30 home runs be in the possibilities could 100 RBIs be there I think he'll end up probably a little shy of maybe a 300 average 30 homers 100 RBIs this is going to center field and again we line out New pitcher in for the National League. It is red starter Hunter Green. I still can't believe that Arise is only in second place in batting average on our team behind Guerrero. If I had told you that at the beginning of the year, you'd assume that it was a really big down year for Arise because we don't expect Vladdy to hit 300. Yet here he is. And despite him hitting 300, he didn't get the All-Star votes this year. What's up with that? Ah, that one. I just didn't pick that pitch up very well. And Green gets the pop out. So let's go check on Soderstrom once again. We are top of the fourth inning. Two on and Corbin Burns is the pitcher. Gotta get at least one A's All-Star hit, right? 
Not going to do it swinging at pitches like that, though. There we go. In the air, right field, and this ball is gone. A three-run shot for Tyler Soderstrom. I love the way his game is coming together this season. You know, we've been wanting to see some players break out with their power, and Soderstrom has done that this year and shows off that newfound element to his game as an all-star. You know, if you want to develop power, I'm finding you've just really got to be patient because... At least in this game, with the way prospects are, and especially the prospects drafted in the series, they're not being drafted with high power. You have to develop it. And it's been that case for some of the better prospects, even like Soderstrom. We got a real success story there, and that's pretty exciting. The American League takes the win here in the All-Star game by a three-run margin. Tyler Soderstrom was the difference this season. But Juan Soto takes home player of the game because he hit a pair of solo shots. I'm checking out our All-Stars down at AAA now, and Gregorio Uribe is included. He's also our only AAA All-Star, but I wanted to talk about him today regardless. Uribe is off to a really good start in his professional career, and he's been one of the most dominant relievers at AAA, and it shouldn't be long before he joins the big league bullpen. I'm thinking next year is probably a guarantee. I think he's going to be one of our best, maybe our best, left-handed bullpen arm. So we took him, of course, very early back in that year Four or year three draft. I forget which one it was. I think three. Uribe clips the inside. I know it wasn't popular, but I do think that we're going to have a couple really good bullpen arms here pretty soon. I want to talk about both of them today. Uribe is already showing very good strikeout numbers down at AAA over a 9K per 9. And neither lefties or righties are finding a whole lot of success against him. Both have averages well under 200. Uribe is just flat out dominating right now. Falling behind Austin Wells here in the 8th. There are two outs. Trying to keep this game tied up. And there's a strike. So Uribe again does not throw like tremendous velocity or anything it's going to be low 90s fastballs and then a change up and a sinker he doesn't really have a breaking pitch maybe we look to add something like a slider in the offseason lined into left field he gives up a two out hit with that Aaron Don exit velocity high fly in foul ground can Jensen get there it was worth the long trip. He ends the inning. Good outing for Gregorio Uribe. Uribe is currently a 68 overall, and his 75K per 9 obviously stands out, and it could get a lot better than that even. Walks can be a bit of an issue for him, but there's a lot to like. This year, he has pitched 47 and one-third innings, and has not allowed a single home run. That is astounding. You can go 47 innings straight with no homers allowed. And honestly, his walk per nine stat is low, but he's not actually walking a lot of hitters this season. Let's look at actual rate numbers here. He's at a 9.7K per nine, about where I want it to be for him, and under a two walk per nine. Quite simply, he has been elite, and he won't be a minor league player for a whole lot longer. Down at AA, you've got another guy in Edgar Gonzalez. He's got an 8.5K per 9, and a .57 ERA with a .81 whip. His hit per 9 is getting a lot of progress this year. I'm thinking Uribe goes to the bigs next season. Gonzalez then replaces him at AAA. And maybe he's just a year behind Uribe's progress. Because Uribe did start out with higher overall than Gonzalez. But both are elite lefties. 
Gonzalez has allowed two homers in 79 in one third innings. So combined, we're looking at about 120 innings with two total home runs allowed. This bullpen could get pretty nasty. A couple things I wanted to point out here at the All-Star break. First off, Ivan Melendez. He's really helping himself out this year with a plus 10 contact versus lefties. He's 27 years old, so we needed to see some good development this year, and that's the kind of thing that's going to help. Plus 10 is a pretty serious boost, and he's gotten that by hitting 351 against lefties with three of his six home runs. Now, there is actually a roster move I wanted to make here to start off today's episode. I think that our bench needs a lefty bat, and Juan Guerrero hasn't hit all that well. We have Miguel Vargas, who can provide depth at first base, and he's no longer playing as much as he was, so we don't really need to have Juan Guerrero on the big league roster. Now, we're going to have to waive him, so there's a chance he gets claimed, but I don't think he will. And coming up is J.J. Blade. He's hitting 271, and he's improved his batting average this year. His contact numbers have gotten better, and maybe that's at the expense of some power, but I feel like his game is now more in a spot where it can actually help us out. He has a really good on-base number here of 386 because he does draw a lot of walks. But this would give us another lefty bat to come off the bench and a guy who has some pop and a lefty who can also hit lefties decently. So it's not a major move, but I think it's a good addition to our bench. We're also going to be moving Deshaun Knowles back up to AAA as it seems he has gotten his season back on track with his last uh, 100 or so at-bats at the AA level. Oh, the Braves have made a pretty big move here. 17 innings, though, is all Alex Lang had, and he ended up being a, an all-star as well. So the Braves make a move, and this is trade season. Reggie Rankin still banged up. We're going to keep him on the 10-day list. Now, I don't think that we're going to be buying or doing anything major at the deadline this year. I'll probably explore just because there might be some players you look at as, you know, maybe we can move off of this guy or maybe there's enough depth in an area where we can make a move that's not too aggressive but maybe helps out. A weakness of ours you know Robert Poisson is somebody that I might be willing to trade if it gets us back something that helps us out you know it depends what we're needing at that time but I don't look at this roster and think there's a whole lot lacking right now and a big reason is Miguel Cabrera got his debut last episode and he has come in and absolutely dominated but only 12 games of experience so Who's to say this streak is going to continue? Like, he's probably not going to hit 333. I think he'll have a good average, really good on base numbers. We'll see where everything settles, but adding Cabrera feels almost like a trade deadline type of acquisition. I did see some feedback about Eusneel Cruz about not rushing him along this season. And we'll see what happens. Like, obviously, his bat could probably help us out, but. I think our lineup is doing a pretty good job right now, and there are some things I want him to work on down at AAA. But overall, I feel pretty good about the team right now. I think that things are starting to come together, and maybe we have a chance to actually make a run at the wild card this year. We come out of the All-Star break with the league's 14th best team batting average, and we are scoring the 16th most runs, so... We're seeing some average numbers there, which is still a lot of improvement for this franchise. We're below average now in home runs, tied for 21st. And I didn't realize this, but it looks like we strike out the least in all of baseball, which is really nice. Yep, the on-base numbers are going back up, and you have so many guys succeeding in that area right now, and guys like Aaron Don getting better, and now he's a top three player in on-base for us. So the offense is in a, an average overall state right now, and the starting pitching numbers are trending in the right direction. We have the league's sixth best team ERA, 
allowing the 10th least runs, or the 10th least hits, and also the 10th least runs. This is a team that's got a chance. Now, we have won 9 of our last 10, so we're going to feel really good. But how does the rest of July go as we approach the deadline on July 31st? Dawn has a 10-game hitting streak on the line. We're bottom eight, and the A's pick up a win in their first game out of the All-Star break. Don did not extend his streak, but he still owns a 273 batting average. We had Guerrero go yard, and Joe Michael deliver eight rock-solid innings. But a weird game for him because he only struck out two. Juan Guerrero did pass through waivers and is assigned to AAA. The Red Sox want to offer us a trade. Jeremy Ironman for Chad Bennett. Bennett is a 65 overall C potential first baseman. He's a lefty with some power. Ironman, he's out of options. So... He's someone I've kind of been looking to trade. He can also hit lefties fairly well. Maybe he could contribute right now for Boston. They got Devers at third base, but maybe there's a need for some depth elsewhere. Otherwise, why would they make the offer? But either way, I think I'll take this trade, actually. Bennett is 23 years old and only has C potential, but his hitting is already in such a good spot that... I'll make that move. That deal's done. And by the way, we gave up 14 runs in our next game against the Angels. How do we give up 14 runs and 19 hits? Oh, by the way, six in the 10th inning. So someone had a pretty bad day. Don went yard, Geloff went yard, and we can't even celebrate it. Oh, what a mess. All right, that's ugly right there. By the way, I want Chad Bennett to go down to double A. Melendez is our first baseman at AAA, and then Bennett can be our option down at AA. I've been looking for depth at that spot anyway, so that's actually like a really convenient trade for us. But now we have a chance to go and try to sign some of these draft picks. We took Manny Reyes in the first round. He was lower on our board than our next selection at 38. But Reyes had the hitting that I really liked, and I want to offer him a decent contract. He's looking for 3.7. So signing our players this year really shouldn't be an issue. And Reyes is under contract already. We signed George Rivera. And then Christopher Byers. Well, it was a high-scoring game, but we do beat the Angels and take that first series out of the All-Star break. Lose our next game to Tampa Bay. And down for nothing here. We cannot come back on the Rays. All right, it is a sweep. Only scoring three runs in the three games against the Rays. Brendan Donovan has now been acquired. So the Royals make a move. We got the St. Louis Cardinals now in Oakland. And Mitch Keller helps us get back on track. Keller's had some really good outings lately. Not all of them, but a complete game shutout is just what this team needed. I did do some more scouting here, and we actually see Samuel Guevara. His potential, I believe his range has only gotten better, and he went to 52nd on the board. He was our third round pick. So I'm starting to feel pretty good about that. And we'll get him, hopefully, under contract. And we'll do the same here with Tommy Mantle. Lawrence Amasa is at 143 on the board. We'll see if that ends up being a, a good selection. And we have one more player, but I can't offer a contract yet to Akio Suzuki. We'll see if we can get that uh, interest up a little bit. But here's the game I wanted to get into today. We take on the St. Louis Cardinals trying to win this series. And we're currently three games out of the wild card right now. I got the notification beforehand that Josh Baez is only hitting like 150 against lefties. It's been multiple years now where he hasn't hit lefties well despite his ratings suggesting he should be better against them than against righties. So that's an unfortunate trend. We do not have Aaron Don in the starting lineup right now. I might bring him in 
when there's a move, but we got JJ Blade getting the start because he is someone that's supposed to be able to hit lefties all right, and he also has uh, an all right arm. So let's get into this one, everybody. The Athletics with Luis Medina on the mound. Medina's been solid. He and Waldachuk are both holding down their spots, playing at a decent level. They're both around like a seven strikeout per nine innings, a little bit over a three ERA. The numbers to me suggest they're solid, like fourth starters, maybe. Trying to bunt is that Alberto Mondesi. That's a nice changeup swung on and missed. Not a nice location, but he whiffed on it. Down is the slider for ball two. The count ends up running full. And that one is deep down the line. Turning foul. But that'll wake you up. And he takes ball four. Medina starts his day with a walk on seven pitches. Getting ahead of the next batter. Hoping for a double play grounder, maybe, or a strike three swinging. This is Nolan Gorman hitting 273 with 25 home runs. Developing into one of the Cardinals top hitters. There's strike two at 97. Wow, that didn't get the call. Two and two, and he holds back, running the count full. Runner goes. It's strike three, and Mondesi swipes second. And now he wants third base, and Soderstrom throws him out. That's our all-star catcher. We're taking on Blake Snell, who's having a down season with a 5-plus ERA, a 1.5 whip. And we've got our lefty lineup on display. We don't watch enough games, I feel, against lefty starters. Miguel Vargas in the leadoff spot. So we don't have Miguel Cabrera or Aaron Don in the lineup right now. In the air, a fly to center. And that is hauled in for the first out. So we're approaching the trade deadline. Realistically, what do I think about our, our strategy here? Again, I don't think we're going to make an aggressive move. Like, the best way for us to get better is to just let more time pass because we've got all the youth on this team, the prospects. We don't need veterans to fill in the gaps right now. That would honestly just hurt us long term. And this is not a year where you're like, yeah, we're one guy away from making a run here at the World Series. And we have some veterans that we have to have a conversation about. Ooh, I could have hit that. So, Arise has his contract run through the end of next year. And Soroka is basically in the same situation because I checked his contract he has a player option at the very end, and I front-loaded that deal. So expect him to opt out. Arise, Soroka, both free agents after next season. So already it feels like next year is the biggest year of the series. And we need things to come together. Unless we start trading guys now. But I feel really good about where the team is and the direction we're going with our young players to where... I want to make that year six push. Maybe there's a signing we can make in free agency that makes sense. You could have you Neil Cruz, Cabrera, Aaron Don. That's going to right center field. And down for a hit. Guerrero reaches. Got to keep him above 300, right? So that's kind of the, the main thing I look at with this team is the contracts and age just it all suggests that next year is our season to go for it now we have some guys who are free agents at the end of this season Domingo Acevedo, Alex Reyes Jonathan Hernandez do we want to think about trading any of our relievers 
We have a couple guys coming up. Is Uribe ready to take over a role? Could there be somebody else down there that could help us out? It would hurt, but I feel like now is probably the time to move on from Acevedo. It's time to think about it because his regression has brought him down to a 72 overall. It's not going to get better. Soderstrom's under it in left center field, and that's the first. Jonathan Hernandez, we could probably, you know, trade him as he's reestablished his value, and I think Alex Reyes would have value. But if we want to make a run next year or go for it, can we really afford to move on from our three best veteran relievers? Especially when the Kinley signing was a big mess. Right center for Carlson. Some lazy flyouts here to start the day. Medina with a 2-2 count on Nick Prado. And he strikes him out to wrap up the top of the second. If there's anything this team needs right now, I'm not sure it's even on the position player side of things. We need younger relievers. And if we were to try and boost this roster in some way, I think you're looking at also wanting to add a starter at some point. You know, Waldachuk and Medina have been solid, but they're not guys who are going to move the needle considerably. Keller's a free agent after this year. Do we consider trading him at the deadline? I actually am really intrigued with that option because I don't think we should be set up to optimize for the playoffs this year. Let, let's try to go for it, obviously, but I feel like next year is the one we want to be most prepared for. Popped up by Geloff. feel like he's been a little quieter lately. Could be a, a day for him to do well, though, against the lefty Snell. You got Dylan Carlson, who needs to have a better second half. Offensively, his first half was a major disappointment. And that's a base hit into right field. Tapped it, and the first baseman's got it. Sweeney beats out the throw. And that ball is crushed. Deep to left field. Gone. A home run. It's Max Muncy. Number three crushed. The game gave me a notification that he hadn't played in a little while. It was time to get him back in the lineup. I agree. He turns on the Blake Snell changeup. And that'll bring up J.J. Bladey. Wasn't sure we'd ever really get to see him at the bigs, but I think that he's finally earned his role, and we'll see if he holds on to it for the rest of the season or not. But I am feeling we go into this deadline with the idea of being slight sellers. Not all the way, but maybe some guys whose contract are up at the end of this year and we have some depth, like if we move Keller... You've got Cole Phillips and Cam Cope who can compete to be that starter going into next year. Or you make a big move in free agency. Busted the bat, and we'll see him grab a new one to continue this at bat. So I think maybe Acevedo and Keller. That's what I'm kind of feeling right now. That was the same swing nearly. What do you think we should do at the deadline? To me, I'm not sure our record is really going to dictate the approach. I think regardless, that's what we should do. Set ourselves up for next year. That missed high to Lars Newtbar. And it's a 3-1 count and a walk. Come on, man. This bottom of the zone is just not getting calls. Popped up behind Geloff, and he'll make this play in left field. There we go, getting ahead of Mondesi, using that outside corner. 
for the outside edge, and then he goes around for strike three. Do we still think there's a chance that Medina or Waldachuk can raise their play another level beyond this? I do wonder about Medina. He's a little bit younger. I really enjoyed playing with him. I was surprised looking at his strikeout rate just being in the, the low sevens. But I think that's going to be the difference maker. Like, if he can start to pick up a few more strikeouts, then, then maybe... Not off to a bad start today. Getting ahead of Guillaume. Let's see that curveball. On the ground to wrap it up. There's a drive to center field. And again, it's playable. But a good swing from Miguel Vargas. Guerrero is hitting 310 at the moment. Best average on the team. Soderstrom's has fallen to 288, so maybe he's uh, a little bit down from the All-Star break, but not this guy. Oh, man! Snell, you're so lucky. So Guerrero's hitting 312 now. This is unreal. How did they not make him an All-Star? That is just... I, I can't get over it. Two down now for Soderstrom. And a sharp one. That was a smooth flip. Yeah, that's just consistently not a strike today. So you've got to work upper portions of the zone with this umpire. Hammer to right. Gorman. Gone. Number 26 on the season. That's the first hit as well for St. Louis. Come on, man. I mean, that was caught too much of the, the zone there, but oftentimes with Medina, I like to work down in the zone, and I just don't feel I can get away with it the same way today because I'm not going to get the calls I need. We move ahead with two down. It's Jordan Walker. He had a deep fly out in his first trip. Looks like 67 contact, 64 power right now. Off Guerrero. He recovers to make the play. Bottom four and leading off is Zach Geloff. And that's going to right center field. Splitting the gap and it's extra bases. With a leadoff double. Dylan Carlson now. He's one for one. Nowhere to go for Geloff. Contreras blocks it. And now pounded by Carlson to short. And that moves up Geloff with one down. Got to manufacture the run now. Trey Sweeney flied to center field, and I think that'll do the job just fine. Geloff opened the inning with a double, and now comes around to score. Medina once again struggling to get ahead in the count. But now the changeup is fouled off, and it's 3-2. and two. Let's try that high fastball. Hammered to left center. Back goes Vargas, and it's gone. Second solo shot for St. Louis, and now a one-run game. So the fastball up doesn't seem to be doing the job all that well, unfortunately. And another 3 and one count. 71 pitches. Medina usually does well up until about 75, 80. Geloff, long run. He won't get there. 3 and 2. And popped up. Geloff, another long run. Still can't get there. We try it again. And it's ball four to Friedel. Action now in the A's bullpen as Medina went from three no-hit innings to now maybe not being able to finish this one. 
Geloff recovers, but they only get the one. He stopped it, but needed some extra time to deliver to second base. There's an 0-2 count now. Medina trying to put him away. And dangerously missed his curve there. Yep, 22 pitches in this inning. It's the most he's needed through any of these frames. And now lifted for Carlson. And that'll wrap up the top of the fifth. And likely the end of the road today for Luis Medina. Now we see how long Snell will go. He's only at 52 pitches. J.J. Blade leads us off. A former first-round pick. Fouled back, and that was a good one. Two strikes on Blade. And now a full count. Got him looking. Vargas hitting now with a 2-2 count. Nice slider from Snell. That's going to right center, and now a rise will reach with a two-out single. And that'll bring up Vladimir Guerrero, who's already singled twice in this game. And now he sends one to right, and this one is tracked down after a full step forward by Alec Burleson. Our lefties will now come in. Starting with Alfonso Montes, the numbers on him and Gonzalez have not been great. So there might be a little Gregorio Uribe hype here coming up with how well he's pitched. Montes gets ahead and misses low to Gorman. And he struck him out. But it's righties that have hit over 300 against Montez. Wilson Contreras. Out in front, two strikes. And he missed low, running this count full. Montez, 3-2, got him looking! With the changeup. Getting ahead of Burleson, it's another 0-2 for Montez. And a pop-up. Montez comes in, does a fantastic job. And now Soderstrom will hit as Snell is only at 67 pitches. And he'll get the sixth for St. Louis. They do have two warming up, though. Pounded up the middle and sneaking its way into center field. A single. And it looks like that'll be it for Blake Snell. And the Cardinals will bring in another lefty in Brandon Williamson. So we don't have any moves to make. I might bring in Don or Cabrera. Well, I might bring in Cabrera just anyway, but Don only if they bring in a righty. And this one's hammered. Geloff, deep, and it's down for extras. Here comes Soderstrom, and he scores. A second double for Zach Geloff. Four to two, Oakland. And hoping for that fifth run to come across. There's nobody out, but Carlson now behind Williamson. And that ball is muscled to left center field. Geloff set up, and he's going to tag to third base. Moving up 90 feet. Sweeney already has one sack fly, and he'll take a second one here if he can. I like the high one, but fouled back, and it's a 2-2 two -two count. 3-2 and two now. Max Muncy on deck. Already homered earlier. And the payoff pitch is going to left field. 
Geloff all set up to do it again. Throw coming in. Not in time. He is safe. Geloff just beats the throw. And it's 5-2 Athletics. We're going to keep in Montez here for the first batter, but then I might make a change. Either way, we're pitching a lefty in this inning, but I'd rather it be Montez who faces Walker. I don't trust Gonzalez right now. Fouled, and Carlson's over and puts it away. You know, Montez has more gas in the tank. He can be a multi-inning guy. I think we're just going to leave him in. Forgot he had that extra stamina, so a couple innings is not a big deal for him. Two strikes on Prado. Neither one is something a hitter wants to, to deal with there. 0-2. Oh, and, and that's in the dirt. Got to work on that curveball. We'll go back to the changeup. And Geloff. Come on, man. What was that? What? I hit it once. E5. I, I don't know. There's a double play. And yeah, that was just kind of strange. I want to make a move here. So Blade is actually going to come out. And here is Miguel Cabrera. I want to hit with him as a righty for once. He is a switch hitter. We've had most of his at-bats as a lefty. And on one pitch, he airs it out to deep left field. But he flies out. Now we're going to take Cabrera out after that at-bat and have Baez replace him in the field. Montez... Do we want him here? I, I think I do at least one more batter. Trying to lay down that bunt, and that was unsuccessful. Friedel's 0 for 1. And now crushes one! That's going deep to center, and another Cardinals home run! Their third solo. All three of their hits in this game are solo home runs. We're going to bring in Alex Reyes now, making his 33rd appearance. No longer in that closing role, but I didn't think it was going all that well for him. Top of the order for St. Louis in a two-run game, and Mondesi delivers their first hit on a ball in play. So their first single comes in the eighth inning. Tying run at the plate now in Luis Guillorme. Mondesi did run twice earlier in the game. We'll see if he attempts to do it again. But we're aware of his speed. Flied for Vargas in left field. And an easy play. Now he takes off. Soderstrom! Not in time. He's stolen second again. Gorman is the batter, 2-0, and missed outside. So, some trouble here for our A's, and he walks him. Runners at first and second now with one down for Wilson Contreras. The outings this year with Reyes just haven't always been smooth. He can pitch out of jams just fine, it's... Just that he's got to do that almost every time. That's by him at 97. So now we've got a couple to work with. And that missed away. And the curveball's outside. We run the count full. And he hits him with a two-seamer. Are you kidding me? The bases are loaded for Burleson. So another ugly outing for Alex Reyes, and it's still not over yet. Probably the last batter he'll face here. Man, that wasn't even close to the spot. Burleson doing a great job this year with runners in scoring position. Can't clip the corner. 
Held back against the changeup. It's two and one. Flied for Vargas. And that'll probably be a run. Catch is made. And St. Louis makes it a one-run game. We make a move and Landon Sims will come in to finish up the eighth inning. And he's done a really good job in this newest Major League stint. He could be someone we're counting on quite a bit going forward depending on what happens around the deadline. Jordan Walker, two on, two down, and a one-run game. Grounded! Sweeney! Got it! His throw is just in time! He gets Walker! And will carry a lead into the ninth inning, but I'm starting to feel like we might want another run. Nice job by Sweeney. That was fantastic. Bottom of the eighth inning, and the Cardinals have only used two pitchers. Williamson still out there. 3-0 to Guerrero. And that's ball four, so that bottom part of the zone is... It doesn't exist today. So we're going to run Aaron Don for Guerrero then. And then Don can swap with Vargas in the field. I was already going to make Don a defensive sub because of his better outfield range. So that doesn't really change anything here. But now Guerrero's day is done. Popped up. Shallow center. Don will retreat. I don't think we're going to look to steal here with a lefty on the mound and Contreras behind the plate. We've got to find a gap, and Geloff has done that twice already. He's under it. Got a slider elevated and pops out to right. Two down. That's going to right field. And won't be dropping in. We bring our one-run lead into the ninth inning. And we're facing the bottom three in this order. And we're bringing in Domingo Acevedo. Lefties are not hitting him all that well, and he's due to face three lefties. So Don is over now in left field. Miguel Vargas moves down to first base. And Nick Prado, who delivered a home run, leads off. That's a ball. And that's definitely not getting a call if the ones that are eight inches higher aren't getting the call. 2-0 to Prado. That clips the outside edge. There we go, strike two. Trying to put him away. Struck him out! Good slider to get the first strike on Newt Bar. 0-1. Just off the plate. Good change up ahead of Lars. Got him looking! Two down! And it comes down to TJ Friedel. He also has a solo homer in this game. Fouled off, and Acevedo gets that first strike. Fouled off the changeup, and 0-2. Oh Got him! Acevedo with the save! Man, he's good in that role. And the A's hold on for a 5-4 victory. Fun game. The Cardinals had three home runs, but we made sure the bases were empty every time. And they only had a handful of hits overall. Muncie got us started with a big two-run homer off of Blake Snell. We manufactured a couple runs with sack flies from Trey Sweeney. And Zach Geloff delivered a pair of doubles in this game. We're going to end this episode with a 51 and 49 record, still hovering around 500. 10 games back of the Astros, two and a half games back of one of the three wildcard spots, which are all currently held 
by teams in the American League East. We'll have a key series upcoming against one of those teams in the Baltimore Orioles. And very soon we're going to have to make the calls on a few players ahead of the trade deadline. I wanted to show you just who is not under contract for next year. So, Keller. I talked about, you know, the idea of trading him and I'm leaning towards doing that. Although he's in a hot streak right now and he's had some really good starts, especially recently. Reyes, Hernandez, Kinley are all free agents. Acevedo. So, questions there in the bullpen. But those are the only ones we have to think about for now. I don't think we have to be a year early on guys like Soroka or Arise. Because as I said, I think we're building towards being a legitimate threat next year. And we're going to go for it in 2028. AAA might have some bullpen arms that could help us out. There's Gregorio Uribe. Antonio Santiago. But as far as righties go, you'd be looking at Jack Weisenberger, who's only 67 overall, and I haven't really thought of him at all. Joe Shaw, who is also a 67, has a home run problem. And then Kendrick Haynes, who's again been up and down this year at AAA. He's really inconsistent. And down at AA, there's also Doug Romero. And I might want to move Romero up to AAA right now just to see him play against that level of competition. But the control concerns me. The hit per nine concerns me. You could also just bring back Kinley at the bigs and just see what happens there if you move somebody. But those are like the possibilities we have to think about. Another lefty we have is Ricky Griggs. So, most of our intriguing bullpen options are all left-handed. So, if we end up trading Keller, maybe we can think about adding a bullpen arm or two in a deal with him. But that is going to end our episode today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great day.